ECOG 45. Pair ordnance, black ops, combat model. Let's engage. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> nice. Let's engage some more. First, let's put the magazine in, not drop it. Put the other one back in the mag pouch. Oh, what else needs to be shot? How about that guy? <laughs> Whoa! Just rest easy, buddy. We're coming back for you. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, yes, this is the pair ordinance. Uh, well, I really shouldn't say, I guess. Uh, it's kind of a secretive thing, you know, black ops and all that sort of thing. I'm not sure I should even mention it. Uh, but, you know, it's written on the barrel, black ops. My advice is uh, to you, since black ops really implies or even denotes uh, secrecy, that if you are really involved in black operations and that sort of thing, don't buy a gun with it written on the side. How's that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, really, it is a black ops combat model. Pair ordnance. You've not seen a, a pair ordnance in my hands. I know that for a fact because this is the first pair ordnance I have ever fired in my life. I, don't ask me why. Well, go ahead and ask me, and I'll tell you. I just haven't had one. I used to when I was uh, doing IPSC. I remember some guy shooting them. I remember being on a squad with Todd Jarrett. You know, I think they were even sponsoring him back then in 1990, whenever that was. Uh, so they've been around a long time, good reputation. Uh, they were, you know, they're very well respected as, as far as I know. And this gun feels really solid. Uh, so it's, uh, it, I mean, again, it's kind of a random thing. You know, sometimes what we end up with, uh, thanks to NC Silencer who happened to have one of these in hand and ask if uh, I wanted to, to shoot it. Yeah, because I've never done a pair of ordnance and we get a lot of requests for it. So. So the specific model might not have been the one I would say, hey, if I'm going to do one pair of ordnance, which one should I, you know, go through the catalog and, and select? Might not have been this particular model. That's okay. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> and it is a pair of ordnance. It's the, you know, the, the fat body. you got your, uh, your double stack magazines, you know, that hold 14. I tend to get 13 in there usually. But, uh, you know, it's one of those. They were famous. Uh, I knew early on. They were maybe the first. I don't know. They had the double stack uh, 1911, you know, grips and magazines and all that kind of thing. So they're well known for that and uh, and well known for quality. I, best I know, best I've heard. I don't recall hearing much negative about them. Of course, you can hear something negative about every company because there's, you know, detractors for every gun you can name and think of. But that's what this one is. It's a uh, it's not a cheap one. You know, it's around thirteen hundred dollars MSRP, a little bit more, I think, actually. But it's uh, it's kind of a premium, you know, firearm. You know, it's got your high sights for uh, you know, in your uh, threaded barrel, five and a half inch barrel threaded, so you can put a suppressor on it if you want to. Maybe we'll do that before we finish. And a nice trigger. It's got a what? An Evolution Gunworks uh, heavy duty extractor in it. So it's uh, it's designed to be, you know, reliable and. It's well made, got good grips, uh, what VZ grips or something, you know, they're just nice grips, nice checkering. So, you know, it's got some of that extra stuff. Of course, nice beaver tail. It's ambi safety, which I don't necessarily care for that much. Uh, and it, it has is all the, it's stainless steel, the, the frame and the, the slide. And, uh, you know, I, don't, I think it's the black nitride or whatever pair calls it, whatever they do with it. It really uh, is a kind of a good looking finish. And the gun feels smooth. It really, uh, you know, feels like a precision piece. We've had a couple of malfunctions with it, but it's a new gun, so we'll see how it does. By and large, it run, runs just fine, but we've had a couple of hangups. But new gun, so we'll see. So we're going to shoot a little bit. Uh, let's shoot one more mag of, uh, yeah, I've got both, just uh, before we quiet it down a little bit, okay? Or just a couple more rounds and let you, well, let's not. Let's just go ahead and put the suppressor on the thing. Like, why not? It's pretty neat having uh, this capability again, thanks NC Silencer. And what we're going to duct tape onto it is the Tyrant, you know, which you see pretty often. The Advanced Armament Corporation, the AAC. That's one of the uh, premier suppressors. Does a pretty good job. I believe we've used that one before. Again, thanks to NC Silencer. And thanks to Federal. 
still got our bottomless uh, dog dish of ammo, right? <laughs> Again, I tell you, that's not a dog dish, people. It's a Civil War uh, dish. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. Plenty of big fat 45s to sling through it. So we'll shoot it some and see how it does. It, uh, I shot it some. It's uh, as far as the uh, positives, it's a pair of ordnance with so a you know, pretty good reputation. And uh, it's got great finish on it and all that. And all the things that you generally want on a 1911 if you're going to that next step, you know. Uh, some negatives I can go ahead and tell you are that it, uh, the trigger is just kind of so-so. It's a little bit, got a weird kind of a feel to it. A little bit of a gritty feel in a way. So one of the things that's really nice about a 1911, you know, they do have their negatives, of course, uh, but you can have such a wonderful trigger on one, and that, that makes up for some of the other uh, the evils. Uh, this has just a so-so trigger. It's not, not too bad. And I have to say, as big as my hand is, John and I are both having the same feeling. Maybe we're just not used to it. We're used to shooting single stack, you know, even though we're used to shooting big locks and other big guns, you know, with Springfields and, and everything. But it really does feel like a little bit like you got a two before in your hand there. You can see that big front strap. It's it's big. So why don't we just go ahead? Let's make sure there's no evil bullets in there. Okay, before we start putting our fingers up here and unscrewing. And let's shoot a little more quietly. How's that? While we have this and access. Now it does shoot a little bit lower point of aim, maybe even low right a little bit. I, I'm not going to mess with it. You can adjust these things sometimes successfully to where you know, the point of aim is a little better and everything. But uh, the suppressor business is, is not a perfect science, let me tell you. If you think, oh man, i got to have one of those, well, maybe you do. They're pretty cool. But they do, you know, some things, uh, They you get a lot of blowback into your firearm. It gets dirtier faster, all right? and get some of it back in your face when you're shooting, usually when you have a suppressor on, depending on the firearm. And it's, it's sometimes a little more difficult to get the point of impact you want, all right? So, but we'll see, all right. So we got her on there. I was gonna get a glove, it's probably gonna get too hot. I'll just burn my hand if I need to. All right, get my ears on tight. Actually, I might not need them, right? All right. <laughs> This is, this is kind of fun. 230 grain, 45. Naturally subsonic, right? <laughs> they, they sort of come that way. So it's a, it's a good round to uh, suppress. All right, let's see if I can hit. I think if I hold near the top of that cinder block, I will hit it. Hey, what a genius. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see if we can hit that before we Ricochet off there. Let's try that two liter. Hold kind of high left. There we go. Ah, Kentucky windage works every time. This is a fairly quiet suppressor. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, you can shoot quietly. Oops, see, we got a little hang up there. I don't know if that's uh, suppressor related, but uh, again, new gun. Let's uh, I'm gonna throw one at the gong. Well, let's wait till we get a new mag in. Let's shoot these things right here. <laughs> well, let's just jump up in the air. <laughs> Strange feel. Let me hit the tree. <laughs> That's a good feel. So it is pretty quiet, isn't it? Not too bad. It's a tight. All right. A new mag in. Let's go to the gong. See if we can put one on it. Let's see, all about 11 o'clock, maybe I can hit it. And low, okay, let's go up a little higher. <laughs> it's just bouncing into it, uh, the malfunction there. No, 
those seem to be going right where I was aiming. <laughs> Let's go closer. <laughs> oh man, that's that's fun. If you have never shot a uh, suppressor, uh, there's, there's something about it that just makes you want to laugh because uh, you, you, it sounds and kind of feels because there's not that much recoil. It feels like you're shooting an airsoft gun or something, but yet you still hear that big chunk of lead hit over there. One thing I wanted to show you. And, or just talk about briefly the reason we have this other big ugly rifle on the table Which you may or may not have seen yet probably have and uh, that's uh, Daniel defense with the uh, integrated uh, suppressor and You may have heard me talk about this before somebody how the 300 blackout is similar ballistically to the uh, you know the 45 ACP you have a round that is between 200 and 230 grains, you know, fairly heavy bullet, you know, traveling in the same uh, vicinity, you know, speed wise, you know, under the speed of sound, subsonic. And, and so it's just a different shaped bullet uh, by and large. So you're really throwing about the same chunk of lead at the same distance. Now I've noticed in, in uh, blackout, you have more, uh, oh, more, more rounds available now. Uh, it used to be, be two, 220 grain subsonic ammo. Now you see some in, uh, and that's what this is, 208, and I've seen some, I've uh, shot some uh, here recently, uh, two, you know, 187 grain, but subsonic, so you see a little more variety. But the, the standard has been 220 grain, you know, which is very similar to the, the 230 grain uh, 45 ACP. I thought we'd just shoot a couple, uh, just because we have them both here again, thanks to NC Silencer. And this is 220 right here, and just because we're, we're what we're doing here, and we've already enjoyed this quite a bit, as you've probably seen, well, it's safe. Uh, but since we are throwing basically the same piece of lead, size, weight rather, uh, at the same velocity, let's go ahead and put it. Okay, they're both hot, and they're both unsafe. There you go. So we got two guns firing a piece of lead 220 230 grain and yeah I don't know what 850 you know not feet per second or something like that so kind of interesting let's just shoot them both and they're both suppressed right now so let's just take a couple of shots with each one and the sound is probably not gonna be that different although this is probably a little bit more suppressed than uh should I shoot I'll just shoot into those uh thanks tanks there a little bit Okay, put it on safe. Let's do the same with this gun. <laughs> that was a little louder, wasn't it? You know why. <laughs> Sorry there, folks. Those were not the heavy ones. Okay, we got one. Those are 115 grain. So we got one in the chamber. I'll go ahead and put it over there somewhere. Yeah, so those are loud. Okay, <laughs> so much for that. Okay, now we have 220 grain. Let's shoot the other one. Let's see, is that a little more like it? <laughs> okay. You know what? I think another one in the chamber. That'll be darn. Hmm, so didn't hit the. Uh, forward assist there see if it helps huh well we'll take a look at that interesting fish <laughs> brought it out to shoot four or five times and it looks like that's all we're going to shoot it must be a piece of brass or something caught in the chamber there and we'll look at that we have fired this firearm as you're looking at us right now today don't know how much of you've seen but we have fired that firearm a lot we put a lot of rounds through it and uh and uh, yesterday fired it a lot Cleaned it, gave it a cursory cleaning because I knew it was going to take about five or ten shots today. And anyway, we'll see what's going on with that later. But you've got basically, like I say, uh, subsonic chunks of lead, you know, 220, 230 grain. So you really do have kind of the same, same, uh, uh, I don't know, say, say maybe the same energy. Uh, people would argue, I think, that the 300 blackout would be more effective in a combat situation, that sort of thing. But uh, 
it's just interesting that an AR, you know, what's becoming a pretty popular round, you're talking about the same ballistics as this right here. <laughs> Let's go. All right, here we go with this baby. It's one of those days, huh? Okay. I don't know if that's partly the suppressor. I don't think we had any trouble if we put the suppressor on, did we? I'd like to hit the gong again. <laughs> that's funny, yeah, they're going low. It looks like that one sort of bounced into it. <laughs> Pretty neat. Pretty neat. I think we'll lose too. Let's take the suppressor off. We're definitely clear. There's nothing in there. She's warm now. Woo! You know, some days uh, you just have a malfunction. Some days you don't, right? Ouch. Pretty warm. I have to bring a glove out here. Come on now. There we go. Ouch, ouch, hot. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, get the blackout. It's funny. It was really not even necessarily going to bring the blackout into it, but I thought I'd do that. So we'll uh, check it out and see what's going on with it. But, uh, got a dirty chamber there, it looks like. Got my speed loader here. All right. Let's shoot this thing uh, without the suppressor on one more time. Actually, fair ordinance. Uh, I don't know. You may have a different experience with it. I, I've never really uh, had any kind of impression of them that they were... Uh, negative you know, and kind of major negatives about the, the pair ordinance they're uh, famous I know back in the day for the high capacity for the double stack and everything and a lot of people like them we get a lot of requests to uh, to grab one and to uh, to shoot it I'll just leave that off for now Oop, the thread protector we'll shoot one more mag let me remember my ears now I can put them on now all right I don't really have a holster for it it won't fit in any of my 1911 holsters because of the rail and everything. So this is not a proper holster. It's just a place for it to ride. It does not cover the, the trigger, which is you know, not good. You don't want to have a holster like this you're going to use that does not cover the trigger. So let's take a couple of shots without the suppression. Let's pull it out. Slow motion. Put the rounds in. Take out a two liter. <laughs> All right. Good little shooter, but does need to be broken in, looks like. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that it sounded so quiet to me all of a sudden because I had my ears in. Uh, almost more quiet than with the suppressor. So, bang. Anyway, that's a pair of ordnance. So I thought I'd just get it out and shoot it since uh, we had it available to us. And it's a new gun, you know, and uh, just needs some more breaking in, I'm assuming. It's supposed to be a pretty good uh, version of of the firearms that they make. Uh, holds a lot of ammunition. It feels very smooth. Trigger is not uh, as good as it could be. Uh, but, you know, it has, a, I think, a pretty good reputation. So, anyway, pair ordnance uh, for what it's worth. Black Ops combat model. Pretty neat. Life is good.